Hey guys, welcome back to another part of the uh, Android head unit installation in the E60 M5. The first uh, first part of this three-part series was unboxing and having looking at all all the components. Uh, part two is installation of the head unit itself, um, and this is part three, the uh, rear view camera. Uh, the reason I decided to break that installation into two parts is because this takes a ton of disassembly and uh, to make it all part of the same install video as the head unit would have been way too long of a video. So uh, a little forewarning, there's a lot of panel disassembly required for this. Uh, it takes a lot more patience than the head unit does. There's a lot more fishing in of cabling and stuff. So um, to make your life easier, I would definitely recommend getting a, um, some sort of wire pulling reel or uh, or or at least a metal rod to pull the wire through the bodywork and through the trunk hinge the hollow trunk hinge because uh, that that otherwise would be a huge struggle so uh, make sure you got that before you commence and um yeah maybe have a look at it all the way through the video so you know what you're getting into before you start it's uh, fairly involved and requires a bunch of manual connections that are best done by soldering um, although you can but splice them but uh, for anything that vibrates, I usually like to solder and uh, heat shrink over top. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. And uh, without further ado, uh, roll camera. All right, so just so I don't have to go back in here later. Uh, I did connect the backup camera, uh, the long umbilical cord that goes to the back. Uh, video I've connected to CCD CVBSN uh, and CC plus CCD plus V. I think that's correct. The other ones are um, DVD input, uh, 360 camera control. Um, and DVD power out, which I believe those are going to be for the dash cam, but um, yeah, DVR might not even stand for digital video recorder. It might be dash video. I don't know. Anyways, I hope that's right. If not, I'll have to go back in, I guess. Uh, now I'm going to connect all these back up to the back of the uh, new head unit and uh, push it into the hole and then we'll do a test. You guys don't have a fish tape yet. Um, I think this was 20 bucks from Home Depot. Well worth the money for not just this, but anything you do. Um, I had good luck going down here, just above where that clip is through the side. And it popped out for me down below behind the carpet in the uh, side here. So uh, to get to the car, to behind the carpet, just pop off this, uh, trim piece here um, my clip stayed behind so I had to pull them out of the body and reattach or reinsert them into the side piece here into the plastic but uh, they just slide back in there's grooves where they slide into so it wasn't too bad I'm just gonna pull this through the rest of the way this is just in preparation for the rear view camera and then uh, we'll continue on so for the side piece here, I just pulled the rubber trim up a bit to get it out of the way. And then the uh, side plastic piece just unsnaps like this. Just gives us room to fold the carpet away and get back behind the pillar. Right to access the seat area, we're gonna have to pull the seat up. So we should be able to just pull up and unclip it. Pull it forward. Seat belts through their holes and able to move the seat out of the way. That should give us lots of room to get the cabling through here. Okay, so now that we're at the pillar here, we should be able to move this piece. Should. It's 
rubber trim just pulls up. Let's give us enough room to push this trim aside. So we can route the cable up and over and behind the carpet. Alright, at this point we're looking at this wire loom and I think what I'm going to do is go to the trunk, take a couple things apart there and then pass the uh, wire pull through so we can pull the cable towards the back. Okay, so I was just able to pull out a couple of plastic rivets, one here and one at the back in the top corner there. Um, those are fairly easy to get out. You just take the center pin out and then the rivet comes right out. If you try to pull this whole thing out as one piece, it's not going to come out. Uh, and then that just gives you enough room to pull this aside and we can sneak right into the back there with the cable. A nice easy path to follow. So I'll go ahead and route that in there and I'll see you in the trunk. Okay, so for this toolkit removal, uh, this clip just un... Just turn it and pull it out of this rectangular hole, but down here there's a couple of screws that are hard to see where the hinges are. They're sort of fabric colored. So we'll go ahead and pull those out and see if the uh, toolbox will come out. So there's 12 of these, uh, from what I can see, these little clips here. So as soon as you pull the center out, sometimes you get lucky. Yep, the whole thing just pops out like that. So we'll go around and take the rest of those out. I did notice this uh, emergency trunk release has to come out too, so just push on this uh, pin and the uh, metal bar there will release from out of the handle, it looks like. And then uh, I'll get this off once I can use two hands here. <laughs> That's going to have to come out for that to pass through there. We'll have to make sure we get that back through before we put all the pins back in. So I'll go ahead and remove these pins and get back to you. All right, so it turns out there's actually 14 of those plastic rivets, not 12. There's two more here and on the other side in these pockets that I didn't see before. And then you have to remember to unclip the uh, illumination lamp harness here before you let this drop too far. Other than that, it came out pretty easily. Uh, now we need to look at the handle. Uh, should be able to access it from the back here now. That's the stock handle and it looks like it's just got some clips. So I'm just going to go in there and reach behind there and see if I can pop that forward. Just sort of unclips. You can see the little clips there. So if you kind of push here and here, this thing just kind of unclips and comes out. Um, I was kind of knocking on the new camera because it had a, just a micro switch on the back. But uh, now that I'm looking at the original, it's really not a lot different it's also got a little micro switch back there so yeah not too bad so we'll need to unclip this wiring connector and clip it into the uh, the new one it should fit right in and then we'll route this through here to the inside and fasten the cabling along as we go so the connector came in fine um, I did notice there's a bunch of dust where the old one was, so I'm just going to, uh, you know, give the hole a little, a little love and give it a little rub. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, I know, there's a joke there. But uh, while you're in there, might as well, so you don't end up rubbing the paint off eventually from just vibration and whatever. Never a bad idea. Well, you can get access to it. All right.
and this uh, new one should pop in similar to the, how the old one came out. Okay, actually pretty good fitment. It's uh, all rubber coated like the old one was. It feels pretty good. The latch works. Probably want to check that before you button everything up. And then, uh, yeah, now I think what we'll just do is route these cables uh, along the existing harness here at the back until uh, we get to the top here before it enters this uh, this hinge, the hinge is hollow and I, I pulled out at the back end, there's a rubber grommet that fits inside the tube to protect the wiring and it's got all the wires taped to it. So I'm gonna take this tape off and retape it after, but I just think I'll be able to join my wiring into that and go through there. So I'll untape that and uh, come back. Right, so if you guys remember, the uh, cable we pulled from the front of the car has the audio signal. It also has passes power there's a power wire that comes in, in along with it uh, no ground though well technically the outside of this connector is ground but I believe they probably use that to pass power I'm not sure so they give you this power jack to the camera and it comes with red and black so I'm gonna have to find a ground back here so what I ended up doing is um, I've bared the ground wire in the back uh, brown is always ground on European vehicles color of earth uh, and BMW themselves spliced all their grounds in the trunk together here so they only pass one ground cable back to the front of the car here so I'm gonna uh, wrap and solder this and put some tape over it here and wrap this all back up and that'll be my ground connection so I've got the uh, cable pull run through the hinge here out the other side and got the cable type taped to it it's pretty tight so I'm gonna give this a pull and see if it'll come through or not all right our connections are made so the power I took the red from the coax side and the red from this little power adapter soldered them together I'm gonna heat shrink over top of these uh, the ground is now spliced into the factory BMW ground up top I'm gonna tape around this and neaten all this up uh, tie all these to the existing wiring looms. It wasn't hard to get through here actually with the right pull tape. Um, again, it's well worth the money getting one of those. And down here, uh, this is the rubber strain relief that tucks in the back of this tube here, uh, the hinge tube. And uh, found out, lo and behold, it's actually a split design. So it's you can just attach this after you pull your cables slide it back over the cables and stick it in after you tape it back together here so it stays put so really nice hopefully there's enough room in there for everything but i think so it was the connector that was too big not the cable so it'll, it'll easily fit in here with whatever else was in here already so i'll neaten this all up and i'll come back and show you guys after all right so everything's neatened back up it's all tied up and tucked away uh cleaned up along here they're just gonna get covered with that inner liner piece anyways but got all this back together uh, I'm just gonna uh, give the bottom of the seat a little vacuum because uh, well that's me um, nobody's ever gonna see this but damn it I'll know how dirty it is so I'll clean this up pop the seat back in and then we can see if this works okay I was just vacuuming under the seat here and I I know these are from the heated seats this heated seats in the back of my car but Anybody have any idea where this is supposed to go? Battery Hauptschalter, battery main switch. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's. I'll check the bottom of the seat again, but I don't think there's any connections of that sort that go back there. And ooh, huh? Interesting. Not sure where that would have came from either, but at least it's the right brand. All right, guys, so I've got the camera installed. I've got the stereo on. 
cars in ignition. So if I put it into reverse, now we should get some action. Aha! Well, it works, but some jackass parked so close I can count the bug guts on the grill. Oh, <laughs> wait. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I'm gonna move, move this truck back and then we'll see what the image looks like without a truck immediately behind it. So yeah, actually not a, not too bad of an image. I'm pretty happy with that. You guys can see it clearly enough. There's quite a bit of glare there too. Yeah, it's awful. All right, so we managed to blot out some of the sunlight. So we can at least get a rough idea of the picture. And it's pretty good. It's not perfect. And those flashing lines you see, they do seem to be on the camera as well. So, not sure if that has something to do with the car running. Oh, yep. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's actually vibrations back there or some kind of interference, but yeah, pictures overall not bad. Good enough to see somebody back there. But I'll, I'll try it again at night and see what the night image looks like. All right, so after I disconnected that black ground wire, uh, the ground loop was gone and all those vertical lines disappeared. The picture is rock steady. It's actually a pretty good, pretty good image. I'm pretty pleased with it for, for the price. I, I think it was a $169 adder, but it adds a lot of safety. There's uh, some pretty big blind spots uh, when you look back and that just fills in right behind you. Especially when you got little kids around, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's well worth doing. And you lose no functionality um, with the trunk or the latch handle or anything like that. So it's it's a, it's also in a really good spot. It seems to stay clean after after driving it for a while. I didn't really gather too much dirt on it or anything. Really have to wipe it off. Um, so, yeah, overall, I'm really pleased with it. Um, if you guys consider doing this, uh, it's a bit of work. Leave yourself at least a couple hours to get this all installed. Uh, and if you're thinking about doing it, buy it with the head unit. Because once you have that whole dash torn apart anyway, you pull those cables in. Even if you don't get to the rest of the install and do it in two parts like I did, it's it's nice to get those coax cables pulled in to behind the uh, left kick panel in the passenger foot well that way you're not having to reopen all that back up again and make those connections so yeah well worth getting um, for the price i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you did please consider liking and subscribing and we'll catch you in the next one thank you very much